Uh, guaranteeing is, is a little difficult, but the, what I think we need to do is work with the range of, of partners and governments to reiterate um, what are the fundamentals of good humanitarian donorship and humanitarian principles that neutral, impartial, and point up where we are seeing, for example, the politicization uh, occurring, which alas has become more and more frequent. That means suborning humanitarian assistance to political objectives, be they political objectives of the donors, be they political objectives of the recipients, um, and um, pointing them up, speaking out, working with others, uh, making representations. My, our, our experience is that the humanitarian people in governments uh, working on, on these issues will understand the, how important observing humanitarian principles of neutrality, impartiality, basing, basing uh, response on need uh, should be the basis of all assistance. Um, the problem is not with them. The problem is with other parts of government, usually, uh, that uh, try and say, ah, here's an opportunity for advancing another agenda. And our point here is that, A, this does not really, this doesn't work if you're really trying to do humanitarian assistance, and B, this should be, uh, should be denounced, it should be um, uh, made public, and indeed one should try and uh, point out the, uh, the need to, uh, to make assistance uh, as it is, impartial. The Red Cross, uh, Red Crescent Movement, um, has been a defender of these principles for many years. Um, there is a role there also of not only for your own, uh, your own uh, programs, but perhaps when you see others uh, of pointing these out. Perfection is often hard to achieve. But uh, this has gone well past the, the stage of, uh, of just casual problems. Well, I think one of the aspects that we need to focus on is that certainly in the area of, of disasters, uh, with climate change, the mega disasters and indeed less than mega disasters are going to become more frequent uh, and more challenging. Um, therefore, the importance of investment now in the countries with civil society, National Red Cross, with governments to build the capacity to deal with these things is imperative. Uh, the international community didn't do well last year in dealing with Haiti and with uh, Pakistan. It points up again what many of us have been saying for years, the importance of building local capacity, building resilience. Um, so that's a very important part of that. Um, in terms of, therefore, one is going to in the future be using, seek the, the population of these affected countries should be able to rely more on domestic resources, capacity. Um, this will include um, uh, national military forces, nationally, um, recognizing that uh, they uh, are often called upon in emergencies. They are not humanitarian actors, but uh, where the objective is to reach those in need uh, where there are no other options, then the priority is reaching people in need. Um, but that should not mean the, a militarization of humanitarian assistance. They should be a, an adjunct a support to, for example, the likes of natural societies who are uh, non-governmental organizations, UN agencies who are able to support. There is very much a downside of, of the military involvement when it comes to much more complex emergencies where there are political issues, where there are non-state uh, non actors, rebel groups uh, involved. Uh, in controlling area where there are vulnerable groups. One needs to reach people in need with what they need. I think the Red Cross Red Crescent movement is a, 
an extraordinary asset uh, across the world. There are national societies in particular uh, who uh, are installed in, in so many countries, in most countries. Uh, and they have a base that reaches out into, into rural, uh, remote communities. I think that's a major asset for um, building up capacity, for being able to do urgent response. We talk about the need for there to be national response in the case of disasters, because the international takes a while to get there and when they're able to do it. But this applies also within large countries, that local communities should be able to, to build that, that capacity. So I think that is uh, the potential there of being able to, uh, to meet these uh, disasters um, is, is very evident. The, um, the, the allegiance that you have to using humanitarian principles is also extremely important. And one that uh, can be important in getting across to other players who do not understand why neutral, impartial, uh, needs-based humanitarian assistance is so, so important so that one can reach those in need. I think, the, uh, I think that's a, a major um, aspect. I would also, and what I've also tried to say here today is that um, as part of the humanitarian community, we should be looking ahead. We should be aware that the kind of disasters we're likely to be facing in the future are not just those that we're beset by today. Uh, and that we need to anticipate, we need to plot vulnerability, and we need to try and build resilience in those countries. So the people of those countries, the communities, the national societies with others, with others, uh, are able to uh, minimize the suffering that unfortunately seems to be an inevitable part uh, of life on our planet today. I, I did mention today that um, the military is very much focused on training, gaming, preparing, um, and very little on operations. Maybe that's probably a very good thing that they're not doing too much on operations. Um, whereas the humanitarian community spends most of its time ambulance chasing and very little time on planning, looking ahead, uh, trying to anticipate what we need to do, trying to bring in uh, what new innovations there are out there. Um, I'm obviously not wanting to say that we should be uh, having less on operations. I am wanting to say though we need to do more to have more capacity to uh, internalize and utilize the, uh, the, the, the new dimensions, the new media, the new technologies um, to try and anticipate some of the uh, some of the problems we have of bad development that are now, uh, some of the problems of urbanization and so on. We need to be adjusting ourselves uh, to be able to better do this. It, it should not be the Red Cross, Red Crescent on its own. Uh, it, it should be across the humanitarian system. Humanitarian system coordination is not about just being nice to each other. It is about being effective for the people who need the assistance. And uh, that should be the leitmotif on which we, we operate.